Hello and welcome to this video on the top five reasons why your structural equation model might show a bad fit. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling or other multivariate statistical methods. If this is something that interests you, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And also don't forget to hit the like button in case you like this video. In addition, please feel free to check out the description of this video for additional free resources, including other videos and workshops. In this video, I want to talk about the five most common reasons why a structural equation model or confirmatory factor analysis might show a suboptimal fit. This is something that I encounter often in my work as a statistical advisor that um, people who are new to structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis don't understand why uh, they get a bad fit for um, the model that they specified for their data, even though the model is based on theory, is well thought out, but they get a horrible chi-square test of model fit, maybe other fit statistics also don't look so good. And so then um, oftentimes novices are a little bit clueless as to what the reasons could be for a bad fit. From my perspective, the number one reason that I have seen in my work as a statistician and with a lot of different models and data sets is when you have a structural equation model that is uh, that has too many indicators per factor. So what um, people new to structural equation modeling often do is they have a factor and then they have 15 indicators on a factor. And then they have another factor and maybe 10 indicators and another factor maybe with 12 indicators. And so that already um, results in a model with a lot of degrees of freedom. And keep in mind that every degree of freedom implies a testable restriction for the covariance and or for the mean structure of the observed data. And so in other words, every degree of, of freedom could lead to rejection of the model because it implies a restriction that might be falsified or that might be uh, might not be in line with your data. So when you have many indicators per factor, then you have an enormous amount of restrictions because each factor then implies a unidimensional structure for that set of indicators. And that is a pretty restrictive assumption. And so oftentimes a bad model fit can be explained by having a lot of indicators per factor and the fact that the indicators are not unidimensional, or we could say that the indicators are not homogenous, that they don't measure just a single construct or single factor, but that they are multidimensional, measure multiple factors, or have correlated specific variance components with other indicators, cross loadings on other factors. And so all these things in confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling are implicitly set to zero. So there are a lot of paths, so to say, that are possible that are not estimated in a standard model. And so that could all lead to rejection of the model. So the tip here would be to start out with not too many indicators and think about for which indicators or observed variables it is realistic that they measure a common factor without correlated errors or without cross loadings on other factors. And then use only those indicators as opposed to using 20 indicators per factor, which will almost certainly lead to a rejection of the model. The second most common uh, cause of model misfit in my experience is related to the first one. And that is when you have a very large model with many restrictions in general. So not only could you have a large model because of a lot of indicators per factor, but also you could have many factors and you could have paths in the structural model in the latent variable part of the model that are implicitly or explicitly set to zero. So assumed to be zero, meaning assuming there's no direct effect between certain latent variables. And then that could also lead to rejection of the model if those variables are directly related. So misfit oftentimes or in many, many cases means model misspecification or model underspecification. We could see mean, say, meaning there is, there are missing paths, missing loadings, for example, cross loadings, missing connections between indicators beyond their factors, missing structural paths in the latent variable model such that the covariance structure is not 
fully accounted for. That is, so say, the most common um, scenario in structure equation modeling is that you have a model that is underspecified, where you don't estimate, so say, enough parameters, or you don't estimate the right parameters, meaning the model as a whole just doesn't reflect the causal processes in your data. And so the more the larger the model is, the more likely it is that it'll fail again, because every degree of freedom represents a testable restriction. In addition, when you have a very large model with um, a large number of degrees of freedom, then you also can run into something that is more of a technical problem that we call the model size effect. And it's been shown in simulation studies and other studies that um, large models with many degrees of freedom lead to an inflation of the chi-square fit statistic. So you then reject more models than you should because the chi-square is inflated. It is too large because of many, many degrees of freedom. Now, there are corrections for this. So if you have a large model, then that is something that you can log look into. When you Google model size effect and chi-square, you'll find a bunch of papers that have corrections that seem to work pretty well in practice for making adjustments to the p-values of the chi-square. So those are two reasons. The third reason that is also more technical, so to say, in nature and doesn't have anything to do with the model as such is when you have non-normal data. Data non-normality can also lead to an inflation in the chi-square when you use, for example, maximum likelihood estimation, which uh, rests on the assumption that you have multivariate normality in your data. And so when multivariate normality is violated, which it often is with social science data, you don't have perfectly normal data, then that can lead to an inflation of the chi-square and it could lead to misfit. Now, fortunately, we have a lot of corrections for that. And I'm linking a video in the description here where I talk about non-normality corrections in the M plus software, if you're using M plus, um, that's very, very straightforward in the M plus software to make adjustments for non-normality by means of robust maximum likelihood estimation, for example, by using distribution free um, estimators that don't make the assumption of normality or by using bootstrapping, all those options are available in the M plus software and also in other programs for structural equation modeling. So this is something that is relatively easy to deal with. Another um, technical issue that can lead to a model misfit is when you have clustered or multi-level data, meaning when you have, for example, students nested within classrooms as your sampling design or clients nested within therapists or employees nested within companies or something like that, then you have a scenario where the data are not independent, you have clustered data, the units or the observations that are within the same cluster, within the same company or the same school or same classroom, they are more similar, more um, highly correlated with one another. And that can also lead to a chi-square inflation, an inflation of fit statistics. And so then you'd have to think about how to make an adjustment for cluster data. Again, this is something that in many software programs now is available in M plus, for example, you have a cluster uh, type equals complex uh, option for cluster data that makes an adjustment to fit statistics and standard errors. There's also the option of using two level modeling to correct for uh, um, not for cluster data in terms of multi-level confirmatory factor analysis or multi-level structural equation modeling so that you can then take the dependencies into account that arise from clustered data. So that's also something to think of when you have model misfit and you have clustered data, it could be due to that. Your model may be okay, but the misfit is just due to an inflated chi-square because of multi-level data. And then finally, the fifth reason that is commonly seen is when you have a non-homogeneous population. So typically we fit or often we fit our structural equation models to our sample and we view the sample as a whole. We don't distinguish between different groups. However, the different groups may show uh, different or different groups in the population, subpopulations may show different causal processes. And then when you um, mingle them all together, then as a result, so to say your overall 
model may show misfit because you're not properly distinguishing between the groups that show distinct causal processes. For example, maybe different cultures in your data set, you, you maybe have uh, people with different cultural backgrounds or from different countries or otherwise um, maybe employees that belong to different companies where the causal processes that you're looking at are maybe different and something like that. And so that could be then due to observed group membership, for example, country or culture or um, uh, type of company or something like that, or it could be unknown. So there could be latent classes, so to say, of people, unknown subgroups that show distinct causal processes. And then when you throw them all together, then that could cause the overall model to not show a good fit. Now, what are solutions to this issue? One solution is if you know the groups, you could run a multi-group structural equation model or multi-group factor analysis. And then in that way, you can figure out whether there are different parameters that hold in different subpopulations, and you would then disentangle those different groups. If you don't know the groups, then you can apply what is known as factor mixture modeling, or it's a type of latent class analysis, we could say, where the groups are found, so to say, in the analysis. So the analysis extracts groups that are previously unknown, that are maximally distinct in terms of the causal processes. And so then that way you can have a multi-group model as well, so to say, but with previously unknown group membership. And then the groups are a product um, of the, or a result of the analysis that you find out which causally distinct subpopulations you should distinguish. I hope you found this video useful for fitting your own structural equation model in case you got stuck with a bad, bad fit. Maybe this gave you some ideas for how you can fix it. If you liked it, please hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops and I'll see you next week.